This is about the importance of the tool motion path when designing mechanisms for machines that manipulate a pack or a product in some way. A very common mechanism needed in packaging machines moves a pack from a magazine station to a moving conveyor. The transfer tool, whatever form it takes, must dwell to pick up the pack and then accelerate until its velocity matches the conveyors. When this happens, the tool can then release the pack into the pocket. The green curve shows a path that the transfer tool might follow. We will start by identifying motion constraints and designing the motions that satisfy them to generate a tool path. Firstly, the path must dwell at the pickup point to give the tool the opportunity to grip the pack. It must be at a certain position and it must have zero velocity at zero degrees in the machine cycle. Secondly, the velocity must be tangential and equal to the velocity of the conveyor for release. But we do not need to specify what the machine angle or position should be. There is no reason why we cannot adjust the phase of the, our conveyor to suit. As a general rule, we find the best motions have the fewest constraints, so it's best not to add unnecessary ones. We can now start designing our motion path. First, the X motion of the path. Motion Designer shows four plots, displacement, velocity, acceleration and jerk. At zero degrees we have zero position and velocity and also zero acceleration and jerk. Zero position and velocity is satisfied of pickup constraints already mentioned. We have specified zero jerk to give the tool a near dwell around the pickup. This flattens the displacement for about 40 to 50 degrees of machine angle. We could put a dwell segment at this point, but this would increase the harmonic content of the motion, making it more likely to excite vibrations in the tool. It would also increase the peak accelerations in the other move segments. We use the same trick at the second constraint when the tool releases the pack. Now the velocity is set to match conveyor speed and the acceleration and jerk are set to zero. The position does not need to be constrained. By setting the jerk to zero we extend the range of machine angle where the tool and conveyor speed are matched. Again we could use a constant velocity motion segment to ensure perfect tracking. However the tracking, tracking achieved by zeroing the jerk is perfectly adequate and gives a much smoother and therefore efficient motion. We do not need to specify the machine angle of the second constraint, so we can move it to improve motion parameters. For example, we can move it until peak-to-peak -peak accelerations are at a minimum, or to help satisfy some requirement of the configuration of the mechanism. A very similar approach was taken for the motion design of the y-axis. Now we have a motion design we can start thinking about mechanism options. We will explore three. The question is, can they be made to follow the motion path we have designed? And if not, are they still acceptable? The first mechanism we shall explore is the pantograph. This has the advantages that both drives are grounded. And having two degrees of freedom, this mechanism can exactly follow our design tool path motion. Now we have specified the motion at the output of this mechanism. We have no idea what motion is required of the servers or cams to create the motion at the tool. Most CAD packages use forward kinematics to achieve the tool path. They cannot immediately give the desired tool path. Rather, the designer experiments with the cam follower or server drive motion until the tool path is approximated. Mac designer can design in this way if needed. However, Mac Designer also uses inverse kinematics. The designer can immediately get the motions required at the drives to exactly reproduce the desired toolpath motion, provided our mechanism has the same number of degrees of freedom as the target tool motion. In this example, Mac Designer has calculated the exact cam profiles required to achieve our toolpath motion. We can use a four bar mechanism to generate a path that would be suitable for this application. This has the advantage that we, we require only one drive. The path is defined by the coupler curve of the four bar, and we can modulate the speed of the tool travelling along the coupler by driving the crank with a servo. Here we have used Mech Designer 
to design a four bar with a coupler curve that approximates the desired toolpath. Design sets are used to control the four bar link lengths to change the coupler path and its orientation. When the design of the coupler curve is complete, we need to consider how to modulate the servo speed to ensure that our target motion path is approximated by the coupler motion path. We cannot use inverse kinematics directly to create our target motion path, as there are insufficient degrees of freedom in a 4 bar. But there are only two constraints we need to worry about, the pickup and the release. We can use the power of motion designer to ensure that the speeds along the path are correct at these points. The model now includes two extra dyads to provide a translating platform for the pack gripper tool. The mechanism requires just one servo to drive and modulate the crank speed. The motion path achieved is similar to the target. The final mechanism we will consider is a cam driven double rocker. Provided we can find a suitable path, this has the advantage of requiring only one constant speed drive and a cam. A further attraction of this design is that more than one rocker can be attached to the primary rocker, thus allowing multi-tooling. This is ideal for high speed applications. Many cartoning machines use this approach. The path we need is a development of the hypocycloid generated by gear pairs, as shown. Unfortunately, a single hypocycloid path does not quite require satisfy our motion requirements. We need a cusp type shape at the pickup and a curve at the release. If we control the motion of the secondary rocker by cam rather than fixed gear pairs, then we can combine both elements of the hypocycloid curve in one path. The cam track through a gear segment controls the velocity of the secondary rocker. By controlling the motion of this rocker, we can obtain cusps and curves wherever we need them. It is difficult to obtain a translating platform for our gripper with this type of mechanism. We use the plane guidance properties of the gear pair shown earlier to manipulate the pack. At release, it is easier to obtain a non-zero velocity and translation. At the pickup, however, we must invert the tool and pack to take advantage of the rolling typically encountered at cusps. The cam could drive the secondary rocker directly, however we have added a gear pair to ensure good pressure angle. I hope to have shown how designing the required tool path motion first identifies what is required of a mechanism to implement it. The motion path constraints should be minimized. Fewer motion segments give a more efficient motion design. If the number of degrees of freedom of the tool path and the mechanism match, then we can employ inverse kinematics directly using mech designer. Otherwise, if we wish to exploit the path properties of a mechanism, we use forward kinematics and accelerate the process using mech designer motion design tools. We have used a planar guidance example, but the same principles apply to machine material interactions with any number of degrees of freedom.